Our next speaker is Mr. Peter Baxter, who was appointed Director General of AusAid in May of 2012. Prior to moving to AusAid, Mr. Baxter headed Consular Public Diplomacy and Parliamentary Affairs Division of the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade. He will speak about responding to the unique health challenges in the Asia Pacific region. And he will speak for precisely eight minutes. Thank you very much and good morning to everyone. Uh, today I'm going to talk to you about poverty, but not poverty as we, we traditionally think about it. I'm going to talk about poverty that in some cases has been masked by fast growing economies. And I'm going to talk about poverty experienced by women and their children in this region, the Asia Pacific region. And I'll reflect on some of the lessons that Australia, through our aid program, has learnt from our decades of working in this region. And I'd like to focus on two lessons in particular. The first is that we need to invest in maternal health, as well as women's education and empowerment to reduce the poverty of women and children. And the second is that we need to be smarter and more innovative in the way in which we support women and children in this region. I'll also discuss, discuss how we plan to tackle the challenges in the future to empower governments to make lasting change and to help lift families out of poverty. My message is simple. Australia is, to, is committed to working with our partners to make change in the Asia-Pacific region and what we need now are political champions to lead this effort. For decades, aid flows have broadly reflected the notion that countries with the lowest GDP need the most help. The world has roughly been divided into three tiers of countries, the lower, middle and higher income countries, and our aid resources have flowed accordingly. In Australia, we see the world a bit differently. Of course, we see an Asia-Pacific region that has been transformed through strong economic growth, increasingly stable democracies and rising incomes. In this region, child mortality has been reduced by a third over the last 10 years. However, we also see millions of poor people, many of them women, who have become invisible. Around 900 million people in the Asia Pacific still live in poverty and nearly 20 million girls and boys don't attend school at all. And we see an Asia Pacific region that has nearly two thirds of the world's poor but only receives one third of global aid. Let's take our largest development partner, Indonesia, as an example. Despite Indonesia's rapid growth, there is much work that still needs to be done. The contraceptive prevalence rate remains at 57%. And the average woman has become a mother or is pregnant by the time they're 21. And over a third of children under five are stunted. At current projections, five countries in the Asia Pacific region, including the Philippines and Myanmar, won't reach the child health targets of MDG4 by 2015 and 10 countries in our region won't achieve the MDG5 targets on maternal health. So how is Australia responding to these challenges? First, we're increasing the size of our global aid budget and the amount of that budget that we're spending on maternal and child health. We're very proud to be one of the fastest growing donors in the world in recent years. And we're using our increased resources to build strong health systems, to keep women and children well, and to prevent families from falling into poverty. In Indonesia, for example, AusAid has worked with local health authorities to reduce maternal mortality by 31% in 14 districts of one of the poorest provinces, Nusa Tenggara Timor. In 2012, this program directly supported 27,000 women to have a skilled birth attendant at delivery. And globally in 2012, we've helped almost a quarter of a million women have their babies with a skilled and trained birth attendant. We're also investing in girls' education, recognising that an educated girl is more likely to live longer, have healthier children, and be able to decide how many and when she has children. Since 2006, Australia has built or extended over 2,000 junior secondary schools in Indonesia. 
our education assistance has resulted in around 330,000 new school places in some of the country's poorest and most remote areas. And I'm very pleased that next year we will spend over $1 billion on education in developing countries with a particular focus on getting more girls into school and helping them to stay there and complete their educations. Australia is proud to say that over half of our aid budget is spent on programs which support gender equality and women's empowerment. We are working to prevent, to, to prevent violence against women and we're investing in women's economic empowerment and leadership. In Timor-Leste, one of our closest neighbours, since 2008, Australia has supported around 5,500 women to gain access to microfinance services. In Afghanistan, we're providing training on legal rights for 13,000 homebound women in two rural provinces. And in the Pacific region, we are at the start of a 10-year program empowering women economically and politically and reducing the scourge of violence against women. We know that supporting women and girls through our aid program is the right thing to do. It's also the smart thing to do. And what we've learned is that we need to prioritise smart interventions like family planning, which are cost-effective and promote an economic return. We know that investing $1 in family planning can save $6 of government expenditure on social services like healthcare. And based on this evidence, Australia committed to doubling our family planning expenditure by 2016 at last year's London conference. This will give approximately 4.8 million women access to contraception, and most of them in this region, the Asia-Pacific. But being smarter is not just about cost-effectiveness. The unique situation in the Asia-Pacific region calls for innovative solutions, including the use of technology to improve maternal health. In Bangladesh, we are investing in mobile phone technology to help community health workers provide a smooth referral to hospital for women in need of emergency services. And we know that there is much more for us to do in our region and beyond. So Australia is committed to spending $1.6 billion on maternal and child health through our aid program between 2010 and 2016. In doing so, we will immunise 10 million more children and provide uh, support for skilled birth attendants at one million births. Part of this funding will be spent under our most recent initiative, a $390 million four-year initiative entitled Enhancing Australia's Commitment to Development in the Asia-Pacific Region. And this funding will assist over one million people to improve their access to quality nutrition, 1.2 million children to go to school for the first time, and almost a million women to access maternal and child health services. But donors and money alone cannot affect the change that's necessary. While some national governments in the Asia-Pacific have increased their investment, expenditure on health remains low in countries across the region, including Myanmar, Cambodia and Papua New Guinea. Australia understands that the real drivers of sustainable change need to come from political leadership, understanding and commitment within countries. And I'd like to conclude my remarks with this message. Although we are committed through our aid program to helping governments in our region make long-term sustainable change for women and children, I call on political leaders and champions for development across the region to work with us as partners to put women and girls at the forefront of our development efforts. Thank you very much.